I shall fold my arms because it's going to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very serious here. Indeed. Well, Mike, I obviously know of your work as a painter just as much as your work as a composer. You've pursued these two things in parallel. Obviously, your painting, like most visual arts, uh, works with a spatial medium, uh, and I absolutely can see uh, through those paintings how much you're thinking in terms of the composition in terms of space rather than necessarily any issues of representation. Whereas obviously in composition you're thinking in a very temporal sense and I get a very strong sense of uh, um, a feeling for time in your music. And I wonder if you see these two things as very distinct or is there a relationship between how you approach the medium? They're, they're both distinct and very much part of the same thing, I think, is, is the best way to answer that because there are very, very strong differences between painting and writing a piece of music. Um, as you say, temporality is, is probably at, at, at the core of that. And for me, with, with, with painting, as I've become more abstract with my work as time has gone on, I've been pr pr primarily concerned with surface and texture and colour and form. Uh, above trying to create specific objects. And um, I think within the music, there's exactly the same interests about the musical surface and the objects and the forms that arise from that. But of course, they're all driven through time with, within that particular context. And I think it's fair to say that 90% of the music I write is driven, and it's driven forwards. There's a, there's a, there's a strong sort of propulsive element to it. And um, I, I think I see time as a, as a very flexible thing as well, because in some senses it's how, how you perceive time is very flexible. And you'll know this, you can, you can lie on your back and listen to a piece of music that lasts an hour and it feels like five minutes has passed. Or you can be involved in a piece of music that um, is five minutes long, but you've concentrated in, it in such a way that it feels epic and, 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 and sort of huge. So. When I'm writing, I think the guiding principle around the time is to do with the material itself and the, the kind of cycles that that goes through and how that develops. I don't ever start off with an idea that I'm necessarily going to write a piece of music that's one minute, two minutes or three minutes. But I'm, I'm kind of driven um, by the way that the, 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 the subjects in the, in, in the music unfold. And that probably hasn't answered your question. You know, it's very interesting. Is, so you mean in a sense it's the potential? Of the musical material. Yes. I mean, would you say you start with sort of reasonably small samples or cells of material, which are then allowed to unfold and um, sort no. of see where they go? Or is that no? no it's a quite diff it's, it's, different to that sort of more yeah. organic. Mold. It's it's different because when I when I start now, when I start composing, I start from the carcass of something that has gone before, and I recycle and regenerate and change and transduct and do all sorts of things to, to material. I could follow material back to probably two or three years ago and I never start from a blank page, I always start from something else and then I transform it. Um, I use randomising processes, I, I invert things, I write new material within it, uh, I change the tempi, I change the context and I generate a new piece out of recycling. And the interesting thing about it is, is that a lot of the material has almost like um, a genetic relationship from the original being. And as I work through to the fifth or sixth or fifteenth piece removed from that, it's like a, a distant removed aunt or uncle. There are things that I still recognise. And within that, the things that I alter most is pitch. Rhythm remains more constant factor through, throughout the different pieces in different ways. But it's all about transforming. But going back to the potential, when I have a piece of music and I think, okay, here we go, I've got 10 minutes of something, and then I go through these processes and change it. And then I'm left with something I've not encountered before because I don't actually have, at that stage, I don't have a conscious control over what's happening. I'm creating an environment of possibilities. Out of that comes something. And then I pick on that and say, this is the way it's going to go. And then I'm driven on a journey by the potential of that material and my own intuitive reaction to that. Plus, I bring to bear various compositional techniques and processes which, which further that. And so I work from a recycled piece uh, into a completely new work that 
that has its own strengths and its own character and its own dynamic. That's really interesting. I mean, that idea of continuous recycling of material and that sort of environmentally friendly way <laughs> yes. of never letting any go to waste. I mean, that resembles what, say, Frank Donatoni does in his work and sort of Michael Finnessy does in his as well. Um, I suppose I asked then, how far back does this go and where does the Ur material come from? There must be some yeah. way, somewhere it began. And at, what, at some point... What, I, what are the seeds um, of that stuff that's gone through all these many, many different transformations? Yeah, the, seed, in these most recent the seeds go back to a, a piece that I wrote for two bass clarinets called... I can't remember. No, that's not what it was called. I just can't remember the title. Um, but it, it'll come to me at some point. And I, I started a... a a different way of composing within that, where I was using various fragments of material and combining fragments. There's nothing, nothing new in that. Sort of constructionist kind of. Yeah, where did the like, fragments come from? Um, they, they, they were derived by um, a grid. I set up a range of pitches and a range of durations, and I matched one against the other, and then I picked out from that the ones that I liked and threw away the ones that I didn't, and I constructed a piece. And that very original material was then used by transforming it and further and further. And I think we'd be going back, oh, seven years, eight years. So some of the material has its origins back then, but it's gone through so many transformative processes that now um, it doesn't resemble, it, there's like ghosts. There are ghosts of the original thing because I don't, don't want to repeat stuff. I don't want to uh, write the same piece over and over again. But it's, it's the idea of actually starting with a really rich, Analogy. When I make a painting, big painting, I get all my paints out, I put a blindfold on, this must sound really silly, and I start throwing stuff and, and moving all over it. I have a completely kinetic relationship, a blind kinetic relationship, because what I'm trying to do is, is get the spontaneity of my imagination and body onto a two-dimensional surface. Then I take the blindfold off and I look at it, and I look for its potential. So it's like a sort of neo-action painting in a way. In a, in a, in a way. And with composition, I'm kind of doing the same in that I start off with this, this thing, this, this piece, or part of a piece, and then I put it through this blah, 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 blah process, and I end up with something different. And I look at it with fresh eyes, and I think, this bit's really good, this bit's crap, blah, 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 blah. And then I work, I cut, I do all sorts of different things. I'm not a slave to process, you know. I, I, I work it to get what I, what I want out of it. So it's a, a sort of conscious, synthetic act upon... The material that you created, uh, you know, bringing a sort of controlling critical sensibility to bear upon what might have been allowed to unfold in some ways. Yeah. Yes. It's it, it, it's sense. yeah. It's 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 kind of like play and discovery. Yeah. And for me, the, the the skill is knowing that it's identifying the potential. I think with all art, it, it, there, there is something about knowing what is good and knowing what isn't so good from 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 your own work, knowing what what avenues to go down, and develop, or what avenues to, to avoid. And as you grow older, you develop a strong technique and a particular aesthetic response to the sound world that you're in. Now, I can compose on the back of a bus. Um, I, I don't need any props to do it because in a way, I know what it looks like from a, from a physical black and white point of view, even devoid of the sound. I know what it looks like notationally and, and the notation is, is a kind of code which represents how the sound can, can, can be brought out of it by you know, somebody like Ian, for instance. That's interesting. So would you say the scores, the visual scores, as works of graphic art, have a certain sort of autonomous essence of their own? Oh, I hope so. The type of album music. Or yes, I really hope so. Um, I think scores have a great beauty. And although I work with scores from the point of view of the sound they're going to elicit, I also am seduced by the way they look. Um, and there is a direct psychological connection between the way music looks and the way it sounds, for me. So when I'm actually producing my scores, the, the way they look as a work of art, in their own right, is an important factor. And I'd be lying to say that they, they weren't. That's not to say that I'm a kind of notational fe fe fetish, fetishist, um, because I'm not. I also see notation as a functional thing. Um, as a way of communicating ideas, and I want that to be as clear as possible. One could communicate ideas uh, both through this, the so-called content of a score, but also the very look of it, the very graphic elements. Yes. So those themselves are mediums 
of communication. That's absolutely. So, so the, 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 the two things go hand in hand. And for me, that they're, they're two things that have evolved over time. And now at the tender age of 53, um, I've got to a point where I feel incredibly confident with where I am, almost as if I have um, a sense of command that I've never had in the past. That doesn't mean to say that I'm not open to challenges, because I am. I'm not the kind of person that likes to stay in the same place all the time. I like to push my, my, my own parameters around what I'm working. I like to learn new things. If your material all shares this similar compositional DNA, if you like, mm -hmm. because there's there is such a level of cross-fertilisation. Uh, I notice a lot of your pieces are extremely different from one another. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to try and identify what might be some of the commonalities across a diverse range of output, would you have a thought, or do you think that's something for other people to decide? Well, everybody, everybody hears differently, so everyone will have a different perspective on what they hear and what's a priority for them. For me, I would say the factors that are universal there's a strong drive um, articulated through rhythm there's a love of virtuosity there is a love of using all the range of the piano um, not just small areas of it um, i like to make sounds that i would say are very very rich and full on the piano that can also be pared down to, to be sort of like pedal down for one and a half minutes and this huge resonance. Um, I like to have different layers of time working simultaneously. But overall, I think there's, there's, there's a kind of passion and intensity. This is what people have said to me around the music. It's not half-hearted. It's not like tinkling around at the edges. It has something to say. And, and that is kind of pushed, bulldozed through the music. And now I would hope that the techniques that I use are, are sophisticated enough in their own right so that the music isn't bullish and it move, moves from delicacy through to complete catastrophe and, well, catastrophe might not be the wrong word, but catastrophic energy release. I like music that has an orgasm in it. I'm old-fashioned like that. I kind of like music that builds to something and then it gets there and then it releases the energy. Some of the pieces do that by moving along and having an explosion and then nothing, and an explosion and nothing. Others, you'll get an explosion, and then a bigger one, and then a bigger one, and then as much as I can possibly pull out of the bag. So there's, there are all these sorts of factors that, 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 uh, that go into it, and I would say they are the, the, the commonalities, the threads across all the pieces. It's obviously a lot of music for the piano, and... Uh... If I'm not wrong, uh, the relationships with particular pianists have been generally quite occasional and not over a long period. Oh, absolutely. Of, and some of the pieces have never yet been played. Um, All of the pieces apart from one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm quite interested why, what draws, what has drawn you in the past so much to the instrument? Is it, the instrument which so many composers say to me is the hardest of all to write for I because it brings so much baggage with it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about the baggage with the piano. What I'm worried about is the fact that Unlike a flute or a violin, where you have a whole range of dealing with the production of a note after you've actually struck it, sustaining volume changes, what have you. But you don't on the piano. You don't on the piano. You have a, a one-time only, yeah, exactly, a one-time only um, chance on a piano to actually create a sound world. And because you've only got one chance with that, the, 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 the reality is that a lot of piano music can sound like a lot of piano music. And I, not probably like most composers, want to write something that is distinctive to me. So that means that it's, it's my ideas that have to take a particular kind of currency within the piece. So that when I assemble those notes and these various touches, that they amount to something which occupies a space that not everybody else is occupying. And the other side of that is because I don't play the piano and I'm completely incapable of doing anything of any use on it. I've never approached the piano from the point of view of being a pianist. I have a point, uh, I've approached it from the point of view of the piano being a, a, a vast array of sounds that have a lot of possibilities. And I have a visual connection between how you can move across a keyboard kinetically and how the hands can move, even in very frenetic and in the pieces that I've just recently written for Ian, where there are four different things going on in different times simultaneously, each with their own dynamics. 
It looks like madness. It looks like absolute mayhem. But musically, it's, it, it'll, it'll work. Masses of challenges for the pianist to do that intellectually, emotionally, technically. Um, but these are the kind of elements that, that, that I like to, uh, to bring together.